general comments. Uh, the weather is uh, pretty good for us. We should play well here. <laughs> With 12-10 to go in the first half, and never since the NCAA tournament was expanded to a field of 64, has a 15th seed won a first round game. Curtis Blair for two more. There's the quickness again of Richmond once they reset it and kick it back out. Guys like Blair have one-on-one -on -one situations that they take advantage of. Dick Tarrant didn't get the head coaching job at Richmond until he was 51. In 1984, the Spiders knocked off a Georgia, an Auburn team rather, that featured Charles Barkley and Chuck Person. And then in 88, a marvelous run. They beat Indiana, then beat Georgia Tech before losing to that outstanding Temple team. And they have a 17 to 12 lead right now with 11.30 to go. Here's Curtis Blair, leading scorer in the ball club. He is a perfect four to four thus far. And he will go to the free throw line after David Johnson picks up the foul. How about that? Well, you take a look right now to Richmond backcourt people. Again, the ball goes inside. The double and triple team from Syracuse comes. Then it's kicked back outside to guys like Curtis Blair. And what happens is when the Syracuse guys run at him, he uses his quickness to get by. Curtis Blair, a junior from Roanoke, Virginia, the leading scorer on this ball club. It is a very young Richmond team. On the floor now, Gene Burroughs, Blair, Springer, Tim Weathers, and Terry Connolly. Basket counts. See, what the reset does is allow Richmond to get in position to execute their half-court offense, which well, they've come here to play some basketball, and so far, as long as they execute, that's exactly what they're doing. They have a six-point edge right now. Billy Owens has another steal. Blair. Jarman was down court, but Blair elected to hold it back. Six has helped that out. He's got two three-pointers out of three attempts. But Ron Ellis at the line. Whoa, David Johnson battling for the ball, and Johnson gets called for the foul. And when you're a very high seed, like Jim Beheim in Syracuse, this is your worst nightmare. You come out somewhat lethargic, the lower seed gets on, and they start playing well, and then they stick around. And the longer they stick around, the harder it is for them, for them to be shaken. And Syracuse will be in for a long evening. Interesting, when I was talking with Ivan Maisel of the Dallas Morning News, a very widely respected writer of college sports, in between games, and he said, I think we'll know in the first five minutes if this is going to be a ball game. And we knew. Well, I'll tell you, I had a guess believe that Syracuse with their half-court trap it's a mistake because Richmond's too good a passing team they will riddle it to death with passes until they find the open man another fun entry pass Connolly gets two Audrey with the foul Eugene Burroughs comes in, he's a defensive specialist. So two freshmen in the backcourt for Dick Tarrant. And Curtis Blair will sit down and get a rest. A junior from Roanoke. Jim Beheim counters by sending in Conrad McCoy. Connolly. Throwing three points. That's his second of the ball game. No 15 seed has ever won a first round game. The Richmond Spiders are 20 minutes away. Blair goes by Johnson, pulls up, and he'll shoot a couple. David Johnson picks up the foul. That's three on him. You know, watching the way that they're guarding Curtis Blair, and Kenny Wood. I just get the feeling that Syracuse underestimated these guys, underestimated their quickness, and maybe even underestimated their desire. Easy to do, you think? Well, certainly for a team like Syracuse, because they were ranked so highly, we saw them in practice yesterday, and they were a very relaxed and loose bunch. 
I don't know, but if I were the coach, knowing Dick Terrence's track record against higher seeds, I would have been all over my team to let them know that I was concerned. I wouldn't have given them a moment's rest so they come into this game focused. They play so much better when they're on the edge. They're so much more active. And right here we see Billy Owens, who now has to step up and may do, may have to do an awful lot more than he's been doing so far, particularly on the defensive end. Richmond by three. This is a Richmond team that started the season six and seven. Can he work for two? But they finished with a 12 and one record. And they lead the second seeded team in the East Region by five now with 15.25 to go. Quick pass, Edwards, Johnson, two. Blair, isolation play with David Johnson. Shields, got it! Remember a few moments ago, he reaches the mountaintop and tries to get over it. That level of anxiety picks up and they start rushing things. Mm -hmm. Entry pass to Connolly for two. Curtis Blair with the assist. And just like that, the lead is back to six. And just like that, Syracuse loses an idea of what fundamental defense is all about. It was nearly an 11 turnover. There's Owens. He's been pleading for the ball down low. This is a game in which Richmond led by eight at the half. They have never trailed in this ball game. Curtis Blair kicks it left side. Chris Fleming. And the skip pass goes out to Terry Connolly. Touch to Curtis Blair. Yes! For three! Ellis kicks it back to Edwards. Three, no. Autry rebound. Left-handed shot, no. Connolly for the Richmond Spiders. 9-10 to go. Curtis Blair almost out of control. Gives it to Connolly. Officials timeout. They had the clean. Richmond Spiders have led since breaking a 4-4 tie in the first two minutes of this one. Blair and Connolly. Jim Springer's in the lineup now. They got Autry. That brings Bayheim up. Adrian Autry and a somewhat lethargic Syracuse team McCorkle is in the lineup now he's got the ball well I tell you Syracuse is lethargic no more they realize it's all on the line right now loose ball taken by the inspirational senior Terry Connolly Curtis Blair the leading scorer in the ball game with 17 points and 455 away from victory the Richmond Spiders Underneath, Wood. <laughs> ...that have been killing Syracuse all evening. And back to live action as Michael Edwards hits a three, but at the other end, here's Kenny Wood. The three answered by a two. The lead is seven. And right now, 129 remaining. The Orange men with a chance for their first lead in the ball game. They've got Autry, Edwards, Lawan Ellis, Billy Owens. And here's Edwards in and out. Rebound, Conley the senior. 1-10 remaining. Shields. Yes! One minute to go. Ellis back to Autry. Pump fake. Puts it up. Three-pointer short. 
They didn't get the ball to Billy Owens. Didn't even look at it. Finally, too strong. And here comes Syracuse. Owens, wild shot and in. 25 seconds to go. Foul on Mike Hopkins. That's going to put a freshman, Eugene Burroughs, at the line. From Philadelphia, a 6-1 part-time starter. For the season, 11 of 14, hitting 79%. But he's only been at the line 14 times. 21 seconds remaining. Richmond up by one. If we ever needed a reminder that this is a game played by a young man 18, 19, 20 years old, it comes now. A freshman, Eugene Burroughs, number 42, grew up in Philadelphia. He will go to the free throw line for only the 15th time this season. And can it as calm as can be. He's now 12 of 15 for the season. No blink in those eyes either. A three-point Richmond lead. Owens for three. No! Kicks it back to Autry. Foul. With just under nine seconds remaining. That's only the sixth. It's a non-shooting situation. They had one to give. And that actually works to the benefit of Syracuse. It sure does. They're looking for a three-point shot. So now they can set something up. Burroughs, two free throws. Have given Richmond a three-point lead with 8.9 seconds to go. Timeout, Jim Beheim and Syracuse. Eight point nine seconds remaining. Richmond with a three point edge. Michael Edwards, Billy Owens, and Mike Hopkins, the three point shooters from the corner. No. Connolly tries to get it. On the line. Richmond ball. With seven tenths of a second left, the final foul of the night. That's five on Adrian Autry. Not before tonight. I got another tournament fact for you. There are no free passes. And I think Syracuse expected one tonight. Mentally, they were not prepared to play this basketball game. And the longer Richmond stuck in the basketball game, the longer they believed that they should win it. And fittingly, the leading scorer in the ball club, Curtis Blair, goes to the free throw line, where he has been perfect tonight, six for six.
the darlings of America from three years ago, the Richmond Spiders rekindle their love affair. They never trailed. The Syracuse Orangemen down by eight at halftime. Had chances to tie and indeed take the lead, but could not do it. So the Richmond Spiders will now face the Temple Owls in round two on Saturday afternoon here in College Park. North Carolina State and Oklahoma State also advance. 73-69. We'll never forget it. 